This Disney World hotel is a lot. It demands your attention. And depending on your personal preference, that could be an absolute hotel selling point or a no way Jose in your books. Let's figure out which side you lean towards here on DFB Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog, and today we're becoming one with the pencils and paintbrushes over at Disney's Art of Animation Resort. Expect to see a lot of vibrant colors and in-your-face characters today as we explore a value resort themed around bringing fan-favorite Disney animation movies to life. Before we get started, let me just drop a quick definition of what a value resort is supposed to be at Disney World, because that'll be a key point in later topics. Among Disney's deluxe, moderate, and value resorts, the values should be the least expensive of the bunch, and with that lower price range comes fewer amenities and in some cases a lot less room to spread out. But Art of Animation tends to push past the brink of what it means to be a value resort in a lot of ways. So how would I describe the atmosphere at Disney's AOA? Probably family-friendly, a ton of fun, super high energy, brightly colored. How would I not describe it? Romantic quiet, subtle. (laughs) The resort is broken up into four sections, each representing a different beloved Disney movie. You've got The Lion King, Finding Nemo, Cars, and The Little Mermaid. And I'm not talking about subtle theming here because subtle is definitely, definitely on that list of words we would not use to describe the hotel talking about every wall, every corner, outside and inside. You're going to see art, you're going to see characters, and you're going to be immersed in the movie magic. Not only that, the movie magic is going to tower over you with all the massive character statues you'll find surrounding the hotel. All you King Triton fans out there, you're welcome. Now, if you're really leaning into the whole Hakuna Matata mantra for your vacation, then you might want to book a room at the Lion King section. All the buildings here have an in the jungle, the lion jungle, facade, with lots of greenery throughout the area. Well, except for the elephant graveyard guarded by Shenzi, Banzai, and Ed the hyenas. Best watch out for these guys. But don't worry about the hyenas. Simba's nearby hanging out on Pride Rock. Timon and Pumbaa also make an appearance trekking across that famous log bridge of theirs. If you've seen the movie before, you know what I'm talking about. And the area wouldn't be complete without that dastardly scar perched on a rock looking down on us all. Oh, and Rafiki's there too. Now is your life a highway that you want to ride all night long? Then race on over to the Cars section, which is basically Radiator Springs come to life. Not as much as in Cars Land and Disneyland, but at least it's something. First, you've got your cozy cone pool surrounded by massive cones that double as cabanas. Did you ever think you'd hang out poolside inside a massive traffic cone? I did not think so. You've also got your mood setting Radiator Springs locations decorating the area like the Wheelwell Motel and Luigi's Casa Della Tires. And you can pose with fan favorite Cars characters like Lightning McQueen, Sally Mater, and the rest of the Radiator Springs crew. The walkways in this area are even paved to look like roads. ka Quick note though, if you stay in the Cars section and you're feeling a little queasy, heads up that the bedroom is literally head to toe burnt orange, like you're inside a traffic cone. That's not easy on the stomach. Now, What if you want to be where the people are? Over in the Little Mermaid section, you're going to find lots of oversized statues of under-the-sea characters like Ariel, Ursula, Sebastian, Flounder, King Triton, and a whole bunch of fishy friends. These guys are just chilling around the Flippin' Fins pool, as well as outside many of the guest rooms. The buildings that make up the Little Mermaid section are painted in deep blue and purple hues to simulate that underwater vibe going on here. And if you prefer straight-up fish to people, then just keep swimming over to the Finding Nemo area. This section is home to the Big Blue, pool and we'll go more into that later because seriously it's one of the coolest pools in Disney World. Your tiny tykes can also play in the schoolyard spray ground area where Marlin, Nemo, and a gaggle of Nemo's friends tend to spend most of their time. Can you find Crush, Mr. Ray, and Squirt nearby? Of course you can, they're giant and hard to miss. Though the pool really is the main attraction of this section, those massive shark paintings on the building overlooking the pool are very colorful and fun and Bruce is still here in spirit y'all, but glad it's just from a distance. Overall, the atmosphere at Art of Animation is very colorful, fun, lively, and constantly gives you something new to look at. Now, out of the value resorts, Disney's Art of Animation is the priciest of the bunch. Depending on what room you choose, it can kind of feel like going to a quick service restaurant at one of the parks, but getting the highest priced items on the menu for everyone in your party. 
How much money are you really saving? Well, lots of the rooms here are family suites, but in the Little Mermaid section, you can totally choose to get a more affordable standard room. These rooms usually range between $250 and $275 per night, but you may find them as expensive as $330 per night during the more popular times of the year, like the holiday season, for instance. Now, why are these standard rooms when the rest of the hotel are family suites? Well, here's a little bit of history for you. This section of the hotel was actually originally built to be part of the legendary years, the second half of Pop Century Resort. Then came a huge recession and nothing else was built. So these rooms actually stayed abandoned for a long time until Art of Animation started getting going. But because these were already built, they just made these standard rooms and then built the rest of the hotel as family suites. Now, these rooms can sleep up to four adults with your choice of either two queen beds or a single king bed. You've also got your choice of window views ranging from the courtyard pool or that really high class parking lot. Okay, honestly, you're not staying out of animation for a room with a view. You're staying here for what's inside the room, which we'll talk more about later. But first, let's talk about those family suites. These can be found in the Finding Nemo, Cars, and Lion King sections of the hotel. Each of these have one queen bed, which is in its own separate bedroom with a door that closes, ladies and gentlemen. Then you've got one double fold down bed, a double sleeper sofa. So the whole thing sleeps up to six adults and views of the courtyard, pool, or parking. What's different between them, aside from the theming, is their overall price ranges. The Finding Nemo suites seem to be the priciest of the options because those are kind of preferred rooms. They are close to that big blue pool, close to the Skyliner, and relatively close to dining as well. So expect to pay approximately $600 to $700 per night for these. The Lion King and Cars suites have similar price ranges, lingering between $575 and $650 per night. If you don't have a preference for which movie theme your room centers around, you can pick the generic family suite option that doesn't allow you to choose which building you stay in, but has a slightly cheaper price point between $550 and $650 per night. They just kind of throw you where they have availability. And that, my friends, are the value, quote unquote, price points for Art of Animation. Pretty misleading, huh? Which is why many refer to Art of Animation as a value plus resort, not just for the surprising price ranges, but the extra amenities too. Okay, now for the fun stuff. Why are guests still scrambling to get a room at Disney's most expensive value resort? The suites at Art of Animation don't exactly follow the Disney World norm. There's no private balcony, sleek and stylish decor, or romantic vibes going on. However, some folks might find these resorts even cooler than the deluxe suites that'll cost you an arm and a leg. Before I get into the details, let me tell you what these value suites do have in common with other higher priced hotels on property. Art of Animation's family suites have two separate bathrooms, a master bedroom, and a small kitchen area with a microwave, coffee maker, sink, and mini fridge. They also have a multi-purpose dining table that you can eat and sleep on. Talk about a whole new meaning to the phrase bed and breakfast. Actually, the table area pulls down to transform into a Murphy bed. So once you've gotten enough shut eye, you can fold the bed back into the wall and ta-da! Once again, you got a place where you sit down and eat. There are also two TVs in the suite, so you can really maximize your access to the Disney World Today Resort Loop and its catchy musical score. By the way, that's the channel that'll give you all the parks, hours, and show times for the day. But for many of us, it is just the soundtrack track for our lives. But let's talk about the immersion here, because that's why people love Art of Animation so much, too. In the Lion King suites, you'll feel like you've been dropped smack dab in the middle of the wild. In the best, most cartoonish way possible, of course, with fewer creatures wanting to track you down and eat you. You got a leafy table and chairs covered with birds and bugs, painted, of course, so don't panic, overhead lights that look like fluffy little clouds, and pebble-textured floors to make you feel like you've literally stepped foot in the savannah. When the Murphy bed is pulled down, there's a colorful mural of Simba just living his best life life sleeping in the vines in front of a waterfall, but Simba's not the only animal lounging around here. There are multiple animals in the decor, like the massive giraffe poking out from behind the couch and Zazu looking all prim and proper on the bedroom's headboard. Even in the bathroom, you can't escape the surrounding wildlife. Timon and Pumbaa are having a grand old time splashing around on your shower curtain, and when you pull the curtain back, you'll reveal that beautiful and famous circle of life sunset. Now on to the Finding Nemo suites. We're going from being surrounded by forest greenery to the deep, cool tones of the ocean blue. 
Here you're going to be surrounded by coral and fish and artwork of those schools of fish who like to play charades by forming different shapes. They're way better at the game than I am, so props to them. Behind the Murphy bed is a mural of Marlin and Nemo sleeping in the anemone. It'll definitely make you go aww the first time you see it. But don't be spooked when you get into the bathroom and find Dory surrounded by Bruce, Anchor, and Chum on the shower curtain. Remember, fish are friends, not food, for now. Next, we've got the rustic looking Cars Suites painted with lots of browns and funky patterns to really channel that Radiator Springs Route 66 energy. Don't forget, burnt orange. It is very burnt and very orange. Now I'm gonna jump ahead to the bathroom real quick because where else are you gonna find a car wash themed bathroom in Disney World? True to the sink's motto, this area is gonna get you spiffy in a jiffy. So what's the art behind this Murphy bed? It's a sleepy mater who's more than likely catching up on Aziz to prepare for some middle of the night tractor tip and escapades. Along with the big art, you've also got the roadside details like traffic cone light fixtures, a map lined coffee table, a couch upholstered to look like a car seat, and metallic accents that give off major garage vibes. Lastly, you've got those standard Little Mermaid rooms, which may be a bit smaller, but still manage to pack in the under the sea details. The Little Mermaid rooms have basic amenities that you can find in most Disney World Resort rooms, including a mini fridge, coffee maker, and split bathroom. Looking for gadgets and gizmos aplenty? Look no further. The shower is designed to look like Ariel's treasure trove, with Ariel herself guarding the who's its and what's its galore from the comfort of the shower curtain. Outside the bathroom, You've got chairs and headboards shaped like seashells and artwork featuring Flounder, Sebastian, Prince Eric, and Max. Now, if you're making your way in the Disney World today and you want to know where you can track down Art of Animation, you'll need to head over to the edge of the Disney World property near the ESPN Wide World of Sports Complex, where Disney hosts several sporting events all year long. Despite being on the edge of Disney property, you're not going to feel like you're outside the action here. On the contrary, you're probably not going to feel more Disney-fied than you will when you stay at this Disney Value Resort. Not just because of all the colorful characters, but also because this hotel has the upper hand when it comes to park transportation methods, especially compared to Disney's all-star value resorts. More on that soon. Art of Animation is friendly neighbors with another value hotel, that Disney's Pop Century Resort I mentioned before. The only thing separating the two is Hourglass Lake, which makes for some great waterside views during your morning strolls around either hotel. And although Art of Animation is closest to Disney's Hollywood Studios, it's furthest away from Magic Kingdom. So not including wait times for the bus stop itself, you're looking at about a 20 minute shuttle ride over to Magic Kingdom from Art of Animation, which may be kind of a bummer if you're planning on spending multiple days around Cinderella Castle. But what about the layout of the hotel? I've talked extensively about what all these buildings look like, but where are they located? Glad you asked. Each of the four room designs is split between 10 different buildings. Buildings one to three are the Cars section, buildings four to five are the Finding Nemo section, six and 10 are the Lion King section, and seven through nine are in the Little Mermaid section, literally out in the boonies and also to the left of Animation Hall. If you're looking for the closest rooms to Animation Hall, the Nemo rooms have you covered, but Building 10 and Building 1 can also be pretty good locations in terms of Animation Hall proximity. Animation Hall, of course, is where all of the dining and the arcade and the front desk and the concierge and all that stuff are. The Nemo rooms are also going to put you closest to the main pool, the big blue pool. But keep in mind that these rooms may be a little noisier since a lot of action is taking place around that central hub, which is why the Little Mermaid rooms aren't the worst location ever. Although they do take forever to walk to. It is just painful how long it takes to walk to the Little Mermaid rooms from Animation Hall. But they're close to one of the parking lots. So if you're driving, being closer to the bus stops might not be as big a deal for you. And what if you want to be closer to the Skyliner path? Again, Nemo's got you, fam. Are you starting to see why these rooms are in the pricier tier now? They're closer to everything. Okay, ready to head over to the parks and meet even more Disney characters? Then you're gonna have to find a way to get there from Art of Animation Resort, and we've got you. You can take your car, but if you do drive to Disney World, you'll have to pay $15 per night at Art of Animation to keep your car parked there. That being said, you won't have to pay to park at the theme parks, which will be around $25 per day for non-Disney Resort guests. As far as Disney's complimentary transportation services go, you've got two options. Number one, the Skyliner. The Skyliner can take you over to Epcot, Disney's Hollywood Studios, or any of the other resorts on the Skyliner route via Sky Gondola. You can find Art of Animation Skyliner Station across the Generation Gap Bridge, which stretches across the lake. Art of Animation does share a Skyliner Station with its neighbor, Pop Century, so you might have to deal with a bit of the morning crowds, but you have to do at the bus stop anyway. That being said, the Skyliner is a continuous system with lots Lots of gondolas, so even if you do run across a bit of a line at one of the stations, that line shouldn't be at a standstill. 
For lots of guests, the Skyliner is a huge perk for this resort. I can remember staying in Art of Animation pre-Skyliner and feeling very isolated. I couldn't get anywhere quickly, had to wait for those buses, but the Skyliner really makes you feel much more connected to Hollywood Studios, Epcot, lots of different hotels, and it's just a huge, huge difference, I think. But if you or someone in your group isn't too keen on heights, then this little perk isn't gonna mean much for you. Option two, those buses. To get to Magic Kingdom, Animal Kingdom, Springs, you're still gonna have to rely on the old fashioned way of doing things, and that's waiting at a bus stop for a shuttle to come take you to the parks. A bus from Art of Animation to Magic Kingdom will take 20 minutes, but it'll only take about 10 minutes to get to Animal Kingdom. Now, this hotel only has one bus stop, which you can find out front of the Animation Hall. On the upside, you won't have to stress about the bus making multiple stops all around the hotel, like you would at some of the moderate resort locations. And on the downside, buses can get very, very crowded here, especially at the start of the day and the end of the night. So even when your bus does come around, if you're at the back of the pickup line, you may have to wait for the next park bus to come by before you can even step aboard. And if you're boarding a packed out bus at the end of a full park day, there's a good chance you may have to stand during that whole 10 to 20 minute shuttle ride. And believe me, that's rough when your feet already feel like they're gonna fall off from walking around in that heat all day. So moral of the story, if you're staying at Art of Animation, maybe skip rope drop and skip the fireworks. <laughs> Go to Disney World a little later than everybody else and come back a little earlier. Now, do you love the idea of staying in a hotel that's got a ton of different food options to choose from? Then you're either gonna love it here or hate it here. There is no in between. Why? Because Art of Animation has only one quick service food court spot for you to eat at called Landscape of Flavors. So you might hate the idea that you've only got one option and one option only here, but you might love that this food court has five different counters that offer breakfast, lunch, and dinner, all kinds of different stuff throughout the day. For breakfast, expect the standard choices, Mickey waffles, omelets, breakfast, platters with staples like bacon and eggs. Lunch and dinner also have basic theme park options like pizza, pasta, burger sandwiches, salads, chicken strips, but that doesn't mean you won't be able to find more unique options on this menu, especially this menu. Landscape of Flavors has several other options for a little bit more adventurous eaters, like shrimp and grits, sesame chicken, stir fry, tandoori chicken with naan bread on the side. It's really good naan bread, by the way. Now, is this gonna taste as authentic as other restaurants around property that literally specialize in these dishes? No, but if you're spending your day at one of the resort pools and you're looking for a more adventurous lunch option, it's nice to know you can order something else other than a pepperoni pizza slice. No offense to pepperoni pizza. You're always a winner in our hearts. And there's also a whole area for grab and go options here like snack packs, pastries, desserts, and bottled drinks. Speaking of desserts, one of the most fun desserts to order at Landscape of Flavors is the mermaid tail cupcake. So that's where Ariel's tail went when she traded it to the sea witch. I'm totally kidding. That's actually kind of gross. Not only is this cupcake beautiful to look at, but it's also very tropical tasting. So look out for this one, all you coconut and pineapple fans. Along with the year-round mermaid tail cupcake, you'll also find a small selection of seasonal treats here too. Landscape of Flavors may not be the five-star meal you've been dreaming about, but it does have a lot of options for a lot of different types of eaters. Plus, it's got a lot of seating, so you don't have to worry about not finding a table after you order your food. The operating hours here are typically 7 a.m. to 11 p.m., which also makes it a good late night option if you need a quick bite after getting back from the parks. But let's not forget the pool bar, y'all. The drop-off pool bar right next to the big blue pool has lots of cocktails and seasonal specialty drinks that you can only find here. You got your boozy milkshakes, your watermelon topped cocktails, even drinks topped with green whipped cream and Lucky Charms. Guess the season for that one. The drop-off pool bar is always switching up their options, so take a peek at the offerings during your stay. I so desperately want to make a and don't touch the butt joke here, but I'm going to refrain because I'm better than that. Not vibing with the dining options here? One of the great things about having the Skyliner nearby is you can just fly on over to another resort and check out their dining options too. World meet Oyster. Oyster world. And don't forget, you've got Epcot very, very close, just at the other end of the Skyliner as well. Lots of food there. Now, granted, you could spend a good deal of time just visiting all four sections of this hotel and taking pictures with the larger than life decor. But if your camera needs a break for a sec, there are other fun filled activities you can do around AOA as well. Remember that big blue pool? Yeah, this place definitely stays true to its name. It's very blue and it's very big. And it is the biggest pool on Disney property. And remember, kiddos can take a break from swimming to explore that schoolyard spray ground water play area and the Righteous Reef playground. Sweet, totally. The major downside of the big blue 
pool is how incredibly busy it can get, especially on those blisteringly hot summer weekends. So if you'd like a smaller yet less crowded pool, the Cozy Cone Pool and Flip and Fins pools are both available as well. Sorry, Lion King, no pool for you. Still love you though. In the evenings, the resort offers movies under the stars for free so you can sit back and enjoy one of your favorite Disney films after a long day in the parks. And for some exercise, views are just another way to leisurely pass the time. You can always hit up the jogging trail around the lake. This may sound way more appealing at the beginning of your trip than at the end though. Seriously, for those who actually still find energy when your vacation's about to wrap up, you need to bottle that and ship it to us. And like all good Disney resorts have, you'll find an indoor arcade area, the Pixel Play Arcade, right inside the lobby. And nearby the arcade is the Ink and Paint gift shop for all your souvenir needs. Now here's a bonus. Want to get over to the parks and start hitting up the rides before they open? Guests staying at any Disney World owned resort will have access to early theme park entry, meaning you can enter any of the four parks on any day of the week, 30 minutes before the parks open to the rest of the public. So it doesn't matter if you're staying in one of the Little Mermaid standard rooms or a family suite, everyone staying here has access to this benefit. Just make sure you've got a park pass. So Art of Animation. A resort with character, color, and creativity, but is it the hotel for you? Well, if you're traveling with a big group and need more space for a lower cost, then yeah, this might be a good option for you. The Art of Animation rooms might not be the cheapest value resorts on property, but they're still lots more affordable than many of the other suite offerings in Disney World. So if you need to spread out more and want the luxury of having a separate bedroom, a dining table, Murphy bed setup, the double TVs, two bathrooms, you can split the nightly bill with other members in your group to help make this stay a more affordable one. Also, if you want direct access to the Skyliner, this is a no-brainer. Skyliner can make traveling to Epcot, Hollywood Studios, and the other Skyliner hotels so much easier. Meaning instead of waiting for a bus or having to drive over to the parks yourself, you can take a quick flight to wherever you're wanting to go. Plus, it's honestly really fun. If you're cool with the whole looking down on the streets below as you breeze on by concept, it's great. It's like an extra Disney ride. Now, this also opens up a whole new variety of different food options for you, so you aren't limited to just eating at the Art of Animation food court. And if you want your hotel to never allow you to forget where you're vacationing, you might want to stay here as well. This hotel screams Disney all across the board, and if you were to cut it open, it'd bleed Disney blood. If you're traveling with kiddos or if you're child at heart, Art of Animation will keep you surrounded by popular Disney animation during your entire vacation. Many Disney hotels like Port Orleans, French Quarter, or Disney's Coronado Springs only give you very subtle touches of Disney, but otherwise keep things more subdued and classy, which is nice, but maybe a little underwhelming for kiddos who want to swim alongside Dory, speed along the tracks with Mater, collect gadgets and gizmos with Ariel, and explore the jungle with Timon and Pumbaa. So if you're looking for a hotel room with literal character, this is it. This is the big one. And maybe you want to swim in the biggest pool on property. Are resort pool days super important to you? Not only will you have access to the biggest pool in Disney World, but you'll also get the chance to check out the two smaller pools that still manage to pack a lot of personality into their theming. Okay, so the family suites maybe aren't the value you thought they'd be, then you probably don't wanna stay here. With family suites ranging between 550 and 700 per night, you could be staying in a standard deluxe hotel room instead for that price. So you may wanna reevaluate those options. Over at Disney's All-Star Music Resort, you can get a family suite there too, and the size and layout is very comparable to Art of Animation, but you actually have a bigger refrigerator. Those rooms can also sleep up to six adults and have separate sleeping areas, two bathrooms, and a kitchenette for around 300 to 580 per night, which is less expensive. So are you gonna get over the top character theming at All-Star Music? No, but if your main goal for a room is to have a lot of space for a bigger group, then All-Star Music can hook you up at a lower price. The cabins at Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort can also be a lot more affordable than the Art of Animation family suites, and they not only give you an entire log cabin for you and your group, but also a full kitchen, living room, separate bedroom, and patio. So before you click that checkout button on the Disney World website, explore your options and see if Art of Animation is really the best resort in terms of getting the most bang for your buck. I always have a hard time choosing between the Fort Wilderness cabins and Art of Animation because they're both very, very different vibes, and there's pros and cons to both Fort Wilderness cabins. You get a full kitchen, you get bunk beds. It's a super cool vibe out there in the woods, but Art of Animation, you've got that Skyliner. So it's real, real quick to get over to Epcot and Hollywood Studios. You get two bathrooms. It's tough, y'all. 
Now, another reason you might not want to stay at Art of Animation, the Skyliner is not a really big selling point for you. If it's not a transportation method you want to use, whether it be because you're not a fan of heights or you're not planning on going to the two parks on the Skyliner's route, then another hotel might have better perks that you'll actually benefit from. And maybe you want more food options at your hotel. Yeah, Landscape of Flavors has a bunch of stuff, and yes, you can use the Skyliner system to jump over to another hotel restaurant, but if food is an important part of your resort stay, you're not going to find the best of the best around here. Here. Unfortunately, that's just one of the major downsides in general of staying at a value resort. If you're looking for a more affordable stay that still offers up a lot of different table service options alongside the quick service and pool bars, then Disney's Coronado Springs could be a better option for you. Or even Fort Wilderness, now that it's got hoop de doo musical review back up and running again, so guests can experience dinner and a show. But if you don't mind paying extra for a resort stay with tons of different dining options, I get you. That's why we've got entire chapters on resort restaurants in our 2022 DFB Guide to Walt Disney World Dining, which you can always find over on the DFB store, which is dfbstore.com. And as always, if you're interested in a copy, type in the code YouTube for some extra savings. Personally, I'm a big fan of options at Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge, Polynesian Village Resort, and Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa when it comes to dining. But again, you're gonna end up paying more for comparable space at any of those places. So remember, you can still make reservations for restaurants at other resorts, even if you're not gonna be a guest at them. But if you are a guest, it's nice to know these restaurants are within easy walking distance of your hotel room so you can crash after a nice hearty meal. And maybe you're looking for something a little more classy. That might be a reason you don't want to stay at Art of Animation. If you're looking for something that's less in-your-face Disney, then this might not be a place for you. Maybe Disney's Port Orleans Riverside or French Quarter Resorts could be a better choice. Or if you want a more upscale hotel with lots of amenities without sacrificing the feeling that you're at Disney World, you can get a Pixar's Incredibles-themed room over at Disney's Contemporary Resort or a Moana-themed room at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort. So that's Art of Animation in a nutshell. It's a fun, family-friendly stay with basic amenities and a whole lot of character. But as far as being a value resort, you might find it to be more costly than you were originally expecting. So thanks for listening, everyone. And thanks for watching. We are going to be reviewing every single Disney World hotel. We've got several of them up already. So stay tuned for more. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.